because me now with me he's the only guy I yeah feel like. that's now that's news to me because I mean I just assumed that you liked him and tools I feel disrespected because it was never a secret and if anything had it been Paul had it been Terry because I've never had a conversation with them in depth as to how I feel about you <laughs> guys you see this triangle involving bu acacia and venus <laughs> i've told myself one million times that but glory it's not that deep it's not that deep but but sadly it is really deep to acacia it's really deep and i have tried one i've tried over and over again to put myself in her shoes you know to try and feel how she feels to try and reason the way she's reasoning to try and just understand what she's going through in her head to understand how the whole thing is playing up in her head but to be very honest in as much as i can slightly relate i still feel like our actions of late have been very very irrational to be very honest and this is not me trying to make a case for venice this is not me trying to make a case for be you but this is just me basically stating the obvious i mean people have crushes on people people are attracted to people but it's never been a case of 100 of the time that the person you are attracted to or the person you're crushing on is reciprocating your feelings reciprocating the attraction guys it's never been the case and funny enough in the house at the moment there are people that are crushing on people but they recognize that they are still kind of strangers to one another and you cannot you cannot force people to feel what you feel for them but in the case of acacia guys i am seeing someone who is very very possessive someone who is still living in a bubble of delusion so this video will not be complete if we do not state the facts completely all right we need to state the facts clearly beginning with acacia acacia's argument is that everybody in the house knows that she has a crush on BU. That everybody in the house is aware of how attracted she is to BU. She also said that even BU knows. Now another claim she made is that every time, a lot of times she has been having several conversations with Venus, that Venus is her friend, her close friend. So she has been having conversations with Venus, telling Venus about how she is attracted to BU. That what she was expecting of Venus is that if Venus was also attracted to be you, Venus should have been bold enough or brave enough to open up and tell her that, oh, this guy you are liking me too, I like the guy you. That is her argument. Now, because on Saturday during the party, the Saturday night party, she had seen be you and Venus dancing together, she felt like, oh, Venice had betrayed her. She says she feels disrespected because BU himself is aware that she is attracted to him. She has said it before in a gathering where they all are, especially the day they were playing their game and they were asking one another, oh, who is your crush in the house? So for Acacia, <laughs> Venus should not be fraternizing with BU at all. Venus should not be dancing with BU. Venus should respect you know the fact that she had opened up to her that oh i'm attracted to this guy so i found it quite weird because guys number one the housemates they all came into the house and from week one they had been instructed by big brother to get to know one another and without big brother even instructing them i mean it's something that people do naturally you're in a confined space with people from different walks of life and you you need to get to know them you know so that you can relate with them interact with them and also enhance your game strategize properly you know get to know your opponents because at the end of the day it's a competition everybody needs to bring their a game forward right so everybody is getting to know one another and in as much as the housemates play their games every single time they find the opportunity you know and then they also go ahead to review who they are crushing on who they are liking who they are attracted to guys it still does not mean that they cannot fraternize with one another whenever they like even vinyl and what's her name terry that everybody has seen clearly now that they are kind of like an item in the house it still does not mean that vinyl cannot interact with the other women and terry cannot interact with the other guys in the house i mean they are still free to do as they please but when they want to come together they come together as an item in the house now for venice 
Venice's own line of argument is she came into the house. People had been very, very quick to tag, to label people in the house that, oh, this is my friend, this is my crush, this is my boyfriend, you know, so everybody was busy. It's more like everybody was busy possessing people without those people they are possessing even knowing. You know, so when you're talking to someone, someone else is getting upset, especially the women. They're getting upset that, oh, why are you talking to this person? This is my man. This is my this. This is my that. So there's some kind of negative undertone with regards to getting to know people in that house. Even if we want to try and make it look as if it's actually genuine relationships that they are building. So for her, she had always liked BU. And because she's more of a sapiosexual person, yeah, people who would rather get to know people first before engaging themselves in anything sexual with them, she had decided that, listen, whoever she's going to be close with, then she has to get to know them. And so, because BU had showed interest in her, BU had started moving towards her, striking up conversations, she had opened up to those conversations. And I discovered that, oh, I actually like this guy and I feel like this guy is cool. And so she has started entertaining his morning hugs, his late night hugs, you know. I mean, they've been pretty much close. And guys, Akeja saying that, oh, she saw them dancing and grinding this week Saturday. Nah, be you and Venus. They had started getting very, very close from the first Saturday night party that happened in the house. I don't know if Akeja noticed or not, but we should also remember that that same week was the week that Akeja was like this with Temba. As a matter of fact, Akeja and Temba were so close last week to the point that people literally thought that they were actually smashing each other in the house. Remember, there was the um, Temba, Akeja, and Dinky Blisses click that even Tato could not penetrate. Tato could not even come through. They literally singled her out, like they removed her. So she decided to go and look for, you know, companionship with Norman or every other housemate. As a matter of fact, she stopped engaging herself in the conversations that they have because they made her feel like she did not belong to their clique. So all through first week and second week, guys, in as much as Akeja has been claiming that everybody knows that I'm attracted to be you, her mouth was saying one thing, her actions were pointing towards Temba. She and Temba, they were very, very close, even up to the point of being a bit romantic. And so her claiming that, oh, Venus is her friend, and she had been telling Venus about her affections for be you guys, I feel like it's all, it's all bulls crap. It's all bulls crap. Because even Venus did not take her serious. And guys, be very honest, I'm trying to remember when they've had conversations. Maybe we did not get to see all those multiple conversations that Acacia is claiming that they've had, guys. I am wondering. Like, was she herself even serious? Or was she trying to create an option for herself that, oh, if Temba does not work out, then I'm going to make my move heavily on BU. And all the while she was with Temba, <laughs> BU was seriously making his moves on Venus. So her coming up with the script of, oh, and Venus betrayed her, guys. <laughs> no, all that has been going on for facts is that Venus and BU, they've been having conversations. BU has made his intentions known to Venus that, listen, I like you, I'm interested in you, I want us to have a thing. Yes, they are still in the process of getting to know one another. And it's quite normal that in that house, when they're having parties on Saturdays, even when they're having fun in the jacuzzi, people dance with anybody they like. Yes. Nobody takes into consideration that, oh, this person is your girlfriend, no, no, no. I mean, take for instance, on Saturday, Vino danced with Terry, but he still went ahead and danced with Tato. He danced with Venus at some point. Everybody danced with everybody at the party. That is what they normally do. So what I don't understand is why Acacia is so particular about Venus. I mean, Venus is not the only person that Biggie talks to in that house. It only shows in his manner of approach to her. It only shows in the way he treats her. Like he handles her like, okay, this is the person I am interested in and I'm putting in a lot of work and effort to ensuring that at the end of the day, she's my girlfriend in this house. So if you ask me, this is how I see it. Akeja does not really have a claim over BU. Nobody has a claim over anybody in that house as far as I'm concerned. It's all a game and anything can happen and anything goes. It's only legit when two people are in a consensual relationship in that house. And as far as I'm concerned, Vino and Terry are the only two people that are currently in a consensual relationship in that house. Yes. So whatever they are doing, 
they are both aware and in agreement to it. Except Vino decides to go and start looking at other girls in the house. Then we can say that, okay, Terry kind of has a claim to Vino because they've been doing things. They've been kissing, they've gotten phys physical, they've gotten romantic as well. But if Acacia is thinking that she has a claim over BU because she's been nursing some sort of crush or attraction over him, then she's 100% wrong. Another thing again is you claim to have a crush on someone but you've been spending more time with another guy almost being physical with him and then when there's a truth or dare game in the house you also engage yourself in kissing other guys grinding other guys i mean guys look at terry and vino they respect what they have look at venus she knows that okay fine she's beginning to like be you and so she does not play the game as well real if you ask me all i'm seeing is acacia coming off as that one person that oh because she cannot get someone nobody else should be able to date that person. BU has said it clearly that he cannot date someone like Acacia because she's very loud, she's very argumentative, sometimes she comes off overly, overly assertive and it's more like shutting people up when there's a conversation going around. She always wants to be right and for him, he believes in allowing people express their, their opinion, their perspectives but Acacia seems to have issues with that and that is why he likes and respects Venus more and would rather be with Venus than anyone else in the house because both of them, they reason on the same level. I mean, there was also Yoli that had a crush on him and he also had to tell Yoli that, listen, I like you as a friend and I'm going to ride with you even after outside, outside the house after the show, but I do not like you in that way that you like me. And Yoli was very, very mature about it and she also told him that, listen, I don't have a crush on you anymore and she walked away. But Acacia is being overly possessive and making a case out of it and telling almost everybody in the house that, oh, um, Venus betrayed her, she does not trust Venus or even be you anymore. And guys, I'm thinking like, okay, fine, you know, carry anybody but can come from your house. So, so what you're doing does not make complete sense. Like she's seriously beefing Venus and be you when when they find themselves in the same space Akeja walks off Akeja do, does not want to talk to Venus and I'm thinking that this is all just childish this is Akeja coming off as being extremely possessive and for me guys I find that very very weird and you know the funny thing because of the way Akeja is handling this entire situation even though Venus has said to her you know even try to have a conversation with her and tell her that listen I'm going to walk out of this whole thing. You take um, BU if you want. Akeja is like, oh, no, no, no. You take him, you take him. It's also gingering BU to pursue Venus more. I mean, BU is now investing more time and energy into chasing Venus. And Venus is now liking BU more. But then the thing is, it's going to create a serious drama in that house. Because I know for sure that Akeja might likely nominate um, Venus and be you and guys it's not gonna be funny it's gonna be a dramatic ride this week and I am all for the drama of course because I would love to see how Venus handles that situation I feel like she's very very calm I feel like she's overly tolerant of rubbish so I would love to see her stand her ground and roll with BU the way BU wants her to roll with him. So a lot of you might be saying that, oh, Venus broke the girl code. I'm sorry, but there was never a girl code because Venus was never Acacia's best friend in that house. So there's a difference. Acacia's best friend in that house was Dinky Bliss. Yes. So I, I do not see any form of girl, girl code or whatever broken, all right? But that is just my perspective. Anyways, I'd love to know your own thoughts in the comment section below and I'll see you all on another video shortly. Have an amazing Monday. Bye.